All right, let's read. Uh, let's read Hilly. Hilly Zhang weighs in on fanatic struggle, explains why he thrives on Mad Lions. The Welcome, Hilly Sang, and congratulations on the victory on making it to the top eight. I suppose you kind of expected to advance to the best of three stage, but still, it must be a relief when you can actually have the security. Yeah, for sure. I think if we didn't lock in top eight this week, it would have been a miracle. The chances of that were very low, so it's a relief, but we also expected it. It seems like the Fnatic players are not bonding together. They're not a team. They're just individual playing. Oh, this is just a quote that they threw in the middle of the page. Love it when uh, journalism websites do that. Uh, you lock in your top 8 spot with the win over Fnatic, your old team. Why has it been doing too well? How did you feel about playing against them? Fnatic is underperforming for sure. I think everyone expected them to do much better than how it's going. Going into the weekend, playing against Fnatic felt different. They're my old teammates and I have to win. Made it for myself to prove that I'm in the right place right now with Mad Lions and I'm very happy we managed to win. I'm honestly also very happy. You know, on my end, I think... Hilly needs trust. Hilly needs time. Hilly needs to be allowed to make mistakes and scrims and there, there are players it's like there are players in there were players in the previous fanatic roster that looked very harshly on mistakes within scrim environments and would passive aggressively like ruin the scrims uh because they felt like it was pointless you know uh, and that was very bad for hilly last year you know, our scrims were so bad, and Hilly is a player that takes a lot from scrims, you know? Hilly Sang's view on Fnatic struggles. I actually want to pick your brain about Fnatic a bit. You've played with four of the players on the current lineup, and you know the organization well. If you look at them now, what seems to be off to you? I think there are a lot of things that are going wrong. Even when I was there, it was hard to pinpoint what's not working out and how we should fix things. I feel that it's even worse now. It's hard to say what the issue is. It seems like the players are not bonding together. They're not a team. They're just individuals playing the game, trying to solve things on their own. But it doesn't work like this, especially in League of Legends, where team environment and communication matter so much. Agreed. You have to talk about these things openly. I feel like they haven't done this. They haven't gone to the step where you actually see how the other person thinks. I feel like there's no person in that team who's able to do that currently. I feel like no one wants to talk about the issues. At various points last year when you had Fnatic, the roster also felt like it was just individuals playing the game. Did you have the same issue? Oh yeah. As I said, it's really hard to pinpoint what the exact issue behind it was. But something wasn't working out. I feel like it's even worse for them now. We did have the talk last day. We know the things we could do with, with what we had and how we could improve. It did get better. We did make it to playoffs and we even went to Worlds. I think someone has to step up in that team. Maybe no one is right now. If they don't do it, they will not be the Fnatic that is used to being at the top. Well, enough about Fnatic and more about you. You really seem to have found your place at Mad Lions, teaming up with Kazi in the bot lane. Many people, myself included, expected this bot lane to be extremely volatile, but it seems like you two play around the edges very well. How did you envision playing with Kazi? I think Kazi and I are both very intuitive players. We like to play on our instincts. I think we often reach out too far, but we are working hard to learn the matchup as well as we can. We will go for many plays. Even today, we played Zeri Lulu into Zayumi, and we still flash forward on level 2 to get a 2v2 kill. We are willing to go hard in matchups at scale. We know when it's good and when it's bad, of course. The plays we make are aggressive, but it's more calculated. We don't like to flip it. There's a lot of thought behind why we make the plays. On one hand, you see you're very intuitive, but on the other hand, these plays have a lot of thought behind them. You have to explain that a bit more. In the lane, I think it's more about knowledge and experience. In teamfights and stuff, it's mainly intuition. I think in terms of precision uh, for lane phase, like, I think... I think if you, it's like Upset and Hilly were so strong together because they cared so much about every detail about the lane phase. And I think this is something that you see with Gumayushi and Keria, something that you saw with um, uh, Viper and Mako. And the, you, you, you clearly see the difference between the bot lanes that do this and the bot lanes that don't. I think Ruler the Hands is also uh, an example and I think that it requires a very specific player, uh, well, specific combination of players to really push a beyond. And I think Upson and Hilly, you know, I, I couldn't I, I couldn't teach them anything about bot lane lane phase. They knew way more than me, and I was learning things every day by just watching them, right? The, the main thing that I paid attention to was as long as they put in the work, you know, that was behind this strength of theirs, right? That was, that was my main purpose, you know, to give them the space to cook and to you know allow them to to explore right that was so so important 
And um, Hill is a player that, in terms of lane phase, is so, so calculated. He really, really squeezes... You know, he, 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 if you miss an auto on the enemy or you make a misstep to, to when you should push it forward and you don't and you don't squeeze the additional auto, he will recognize this, you know, because as silly as it might sound, a lot of these range matchups are very, very like clinical. A lot of the melee matchups are a lot easier because you're stronger, you throw your spells at the enemy, you win, right? The range matchups are very, very delicate and one misstep can really decide it. And we've seen that a lot in the LEC. We see that a lot. We saw that at Worlds last year too. When Lulu Aphelios was playing against Lucian Nami, it was fireworks. Both teams were trading down to, to 1 HP. The melee matchups are very straightforward. When people say uh, a support can't play ranged matchups or ranged champions, it's not that they struggle to do the portion that is so easy. Like later on in the game, you have to press your spells on the AD carry. You have to polymorph the champion that goes in. You have to ult. That is very streamlined and very straightforward. But in terms of lane phase, it is very complicated. Very complicated. And in solo queue, you have the Lulu players, the Yumi players that get away with doing absolutely nothing because in solo queue is very different because the gold concentration is much higher in solo queue. What I mean with gold concentration is Plain and simple, in competitive, the gold distribution is rather even because you have very little solo kills and not a lot of ganks that succeed, right? Of course, there are outliers, there are games where it occurs and so forth, and it definitely happens where players have concentrated gold. But majority of the time, mid lane, AD carry, top lane, they have relatively similar gold values, right? So in a situation where you're even with a range support, you can't just latch on to the strongest member and hope to succeed. There's many times the people that have success with the range support is that basically they just hitch their wagon to whoever is fed in the game. And that is a very good way of playing solo queue because odds are you're going to have maybe some teammates that are going to do well, right? And then you just elevate their performance. But in solo queue, it doesn't, in, in competitive play, it doesn't quite work the same, right? Um, we continue. Or it, it, it works the same in competitive too, but it's much harder to achieve because people are more precise. Talk about Mad Lions as a whole, it's impressive how quickly the team has come together. Obviously you've played with Niski before and there's some fam familiarity from the former Mad Roses too, but the roster puzzled altogether is a new one. How do you explain the team's performance so far? On the player side, I think everyone likes each other and that's why I think we're doing very well. We're the type of team that when we go on stage, we get very excited. We're pumped up to perform and show the world what we're capable of. When we're playing on the stage, we feel empowered and we play way better than we do in practice. We trust each other and things just work out. So these guys are uh, inting a little bit in scrims. <laughs> but yeah, in practice, things are not so not as good as they look. I don't know what the reason is. It's not that we're doing horribly in practice, but sometimes we lose three or four games in a day. We're not that sharp right now, but we're learning a lot because we experiment a lot. I think we're just stage players in a way. I did an interview with Mac just before the split started and he told me you've stepped up quite a bit as a leader for the team, especially when doing game reviews, etc. Can you tell me a bit about your role on the team? Uh, thank you very much, Halcyon77, uh, for your subscription. You are so smart. You are brilliant. You are gorgeous. And you will succeed in life. I'm the type of person that is very timid and shy when it comes to real life. I would not approach somebody I don't know. When it comes to League of Legends, I'm very opinionated. I like to share my experience and I've been around for a while. I feel that I can teach almost every player I play uh, with about situations that I'm familiar with. I'm very confident when it comes to my knowledge of League of Legends. When it comes to stage games, I don't shot call all the time, but when I call, I'm very certain about it. My teammates trust me and they follow me. Hilly Baba. It's still very early, of course. I don't get why why articles do this. It's like, I just read this quote, and then it's it comes, I, I, I guess. It's still very early, of course, but what is the long-term perspective you see for this Mad Lions roster? I'm not cocky. Cocky. I don't think I should say anything too big, because I would be lying to myself if I said anything with certainty. I'm very realistic when it comes to this. Right now we're doing very well, but our practice isn't doing too hot, as I said. It's very hard for me to rate us. If we keep playing as we do on stage, if we keep drafting well, and if we keep practicing the champions for it, we'll be a very good team. But if we get cocky and our heads are high in the sky, we could be a very mediocre team. 
Nice. Strong words. Everyone is putting a lot of effort into practice. We're playing a solo queue, watching VODs of the enemies, and we studied the champions. If we keep doing that, we'll be a great team. That's nice. That's a good interview. Very good interview. Happy to hear. Um, so, yeah, I, I, words cannot express how happy I am for Hilly. I'm so happy uh, for, for Hilly. I uh, think that he... I think Hilly is one of the best players Europe has ever had. Uh, and and that's what it is.